warehouses. Oh, that's going to be where I'm Yeah, oh yeah, this huge, it, the whole block is going to be one, that's 55 Bay Street, I think is the name of it. Yeah, yeah. Bay Street, yeah. one yeah. wall. Street. That's, I think, the first one that's coming out of the ground, but more are coming. And, you know, they don't have windows. Actually, they, 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 they both started out of the ground, the one that yeah. strikes the, the, the land that's actually like, here. Yeah, they started on that too, yeah. And this is the same, the same company, the same yeah. space. No, but by Santander, by Santander. That's a residential. That's a residential, that's a residential with commercial and a uh, ground yeah. floor. Yeah, that one. Yeah. So that's has, has everyone seen the rendering of what that building's going to look like next to Ikea? Yes. It's incredible. It's mm -hmm. massive. It's like it's it's massive. It's actually in the towers over Ikea. Yeah. yeah. So Ikea would look like it's going to be in the shadows yeah. of that building there. So it's, uh, I remember when you're all upset about Ikea. It just overnights and stuff. It just keeps cycling through the building. It means trucks throughout the night, big trucks in the night, little trucks during the day, and it's just. They well, just, she's asking more about the zoning. So, oh, it's zoning. as of right, as of right, as it's as of right. Of right. It was right. that 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 particular block was. Uh, uh, denoted as a manufacturing block, so as a right, you can put certain things there, and that's what they're doing. You they know? get schools across the street. Even though there's schools across the street, and we tried, we sent a letter actually to the committee saying, like, hey, we consider that yeah. because these rules were written in 1961 exactly. when the zoning resolution was changed. There was no Amazon in 1961. Right. There was not. I understand. I understand that part. I still don't understand why they want to bring everything and look at it before. I know, but you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, everybody wants to know the rhythm. Exactly, you can catch a ride on the drone from Amazon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You should be back. You should be back. You should be back. You should be back. So, so it doesn't quite fit, so we got to make it fit. And yeah. the truck route is a part of that, which is a transportation issue. And the zoning, you know, okay. Let's have some warehouses, maybe we combine with other stuff, but let's not have everything become a last mile, exactly. last mile warehouse that you did. Exactly. Right. Next committee. Next committee. Who's next? And, and can I just note that things are constantly changing in the city, so there is a gas moratorium. So that, in effect, uh, changed the stock market in regards to uh, multiple dwelling housing because people have to find a different way to uh, energize their buildings. There is a moratorium on gas now in New York. So that means as people build, they'll be building more passive houses they'll be using uh, alternative um, energies. They're not running new gas service to, to new construction in parts of the city. Like right. Natural gas? Yes, natural gas. gas. Especially yes. like in the Bronx and Westchester. They because have we're in a climate emergency yeah. and we have people like 350BK and myself as an environmentalist who are pushing for fossil free and for alternatives to fossil. And I get it, that's a huge undertaking and it's gonna change a lot of things that happen here in New York and I'm a little afraid of what's gonna happen but we have to do something. We just can't sit and, and wait to be swallowed up in climate change which is gonna be urban heat islands, that's, that kills more people than um, coal does. Also, it interacts with the environment so you have these toxins coming up because you're getting more surge and you're getting more water. And so now you're dealing with open sewers, the Warner's Canal. Um, so you have to put all of those pieces together when you really talk about resiliency. Hey all, I'd like to guys. Um, thanks for coming along today. So I'm Adam Armstrong. I'm, I'm, I've been on this committee since it was the Red Hook Rising Committee. Been Red Hook resident since around 2002. Um, I live on Pioneer Street, probably meant that as well. So, so um, my focus, the focus of my committee has been energy and transportation. Um, you may know me, maybe I've been bugging people for years about the ships, the cruise ships coming in and uh, idling when they're in port. And I'm one of the guys, or I think I was probably maybe one of the first guys that was jumping up and down saying these huge ships shouldn't be coming in idling their engines 24 hours a day, burning dirty diesel and polluting our neighborhood, where there was an alternative to plug these ships into electricity, clean electricity, turn off their diesel engines when they're in port, save our kids from uh, sucking in those uh, fumes, you know, the particulate matter and all the diesel emissions that everyone's realizing more and more is so dangerous. 
so that's that's where I got my start. I was bugging Willie about this years ago, and the, and, the, and many and many other people. So maybe not my place. But, uh, but, um, so let me let me talk about what we're doing in energy and transportation. And there's a lot of stuff in there. This is very this is a very short list in my way of thinking. But um, so there's stuff that's missing. Some of it um, I'll try and articulate. But if you guys have other ideas too, of course, this is what this is all about. So. This is um, actually our current conditions, what the things that are sort of our problems in general, the things that are making problems for us. Obviously, air quality, now we're talking about trucks, we have more trucks coming. This diesel exhaust is not only from trucks, it's from the port, it's from the container ships, it's from the cruise ships, it's from the tr trucks that come in and out of the port, which are a whole different thing as well. Um, it's from the delivery trucks, it's from the machinery at the port, there's, uh, there's Diesel um, machinery that gets used just in the just in the course of the port operating. So uh, there's a lot of diesel, and obviously the big issue with this in our neighbourhood is you know asthma rates, high childhood asthma rates. Um, that was the thing that jumped out at me when I first started looking at this stuff. It's like, well, how can we be creating more diesel emissions in a neighbourhood where childhood asthma rates, I believe, from the Red Hook Initiative, they were saying they're at 40 percent. How can we bring more diesel to our neighbourhood? So you may think this is so. Is this, is this energy and transportation? Not exactly, but I mean, energy and transportation are all combining to affect our environment and our health. So that's why these two things are working together. And that's why some of the strategies that we're doing, at e, uh, that we're suggesting or trying to talk about, have to do with energy, but obviously the offshoot is health, the health of our neighborhood. Um, so, so yeah, so there we go. So the, our energy problems is we're relying on dirty fossil fuels as well, for our transportation needs, whatever they may be. Um, the other part of the energy uh, piece is uh, how power is generated. So at the moment, you know, we're getting our energy from Con Air, we're getting them sometimes from gas-powered coal plants. Um, our idea in, uh, in the energy committee is to come up, come up with clean energy options for Red Rock. Solar, renewable energies of any kind, stuff that also brings ownership back to Red Rock. So that we're in control of our energy. We have a resilient energy, sorry to use that system, but a reliable energy system. So that in a storm event or in a you know a hot day like we are, I think I think we power enough in my house like three times yesterday. Yeah. So you know, I mean stuff like that. We don't want that happening in Red Hog, particularly in a time like Super Storm Sandy, where none of us had electricity for a while and that had huge ramifications, not only for just electricity but in in public housing, you know, the pumps turned off, people mm -hmm. used elevators, the water system went down. So energy has a lot of um, a reliable energy system has a lot of positive impacts all over. Um, so here, here are some of my uh, the other things. So, okay, this is what I'm saying here um, about insufficient use of shore power. <coughs> yes, we did get shore power operational down there at the cruise terminal where ships are supposed to plug in. Unfortunately, the EDC did not build a shore power system that works for every ship, not even a ship that it was designed for, which is the Queen Mary Tudor. So there have been problems over the last number of years where ships have not been plugging in and they're just coming in and idling their engines. So that's been a problem. It's not only because uh, the shore power was not built sufficiently, it's because the cruise companies can do what they want. They can come in, they don't, there's no enforcement mechanism to make them plug in. So, um, now other issues with transportation are obviously, um, we're still having a problem with our bus route. B61 is not great. The other issue is maybe uh, there's no direct bus route to Manhattan through the tunnel, which has been talked about for years. Um, the ferry service, it frequent might not be the right term. I think the I think the ferry service maybe can be improved. Obviously, timetables can work. Like my wife works early in the morning; she can't catch the ferry to work. She's a nurse, so I think people that go to shift work, I think maybe we should try and get stuff like this. I'm I'm probably jumping ahead here, but these, these are our these are the problems with the ferry service, and also the fact that we need more people for Red Hook using the ferry. I don't think that a lot of people still don't seem to know about the ferry. We need outreach. We need. We're talking to Karen about this. It was like, well, why would I want to catch the ferry? Because you've already got your bus route. But so there's ways that we can make the ferry system more efficient and work for everyone in Red Hook. Um, and obviously, uh, that the limited street connectivity is just really about getting to where we want, getting to the bus. It's tough to get across Hamilton Avenue if you want to go over that way. If you want to walk to the subway. The walk, the walk to the ferry is not very well signed. Stuff like this, um, and obviously in Red Hook, you know, we need jobs. We need a lot of, we need a lot more jobs. We need good jobs. We need jobs that are local. This, uh, there's a lot of overlap here with stuff that say um, that Alex was saying. So you know, walk to work jobs, good jobs that people, you know, that, that are in industries that will last 
and, and support the families of Red Hawk. So, um, do I want to ask what we missed right now? Yeah, Robert. I mean, with the nice science, you're not really missing nothing out there. In terms of further service, it's true. We need to have a I didn't know about this first myself until Carolina had told me to kind of try to tell you. Right, it's a thing that I'm street. And I used to live in Frank, like, like I got a block for me. Right. So I decided one day I'm going to go ride the ferry. Yeah. And I think, in terms of ferry, if we, something simple as just making a video posted to Facebook, of you walking to the ferry, riding into the man, mm -hmm. and seeing it, you'd be like, oh, yeah. I can try that. Right. Now, as in terms of bus transportation, yes. For years, we've been trying to get a bus to Manhattan. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank God now, it's actually officially on the MTA's table. It is. Yeah, it's, it's on the table. Right. Um, I've been dealing with um, <coughs> Daryl Ira, he's the Vice President of the Department of Buses. And the reason that bus was discontinued in the past was all ridership, but Brooklyn has gotten so big. Mm -hmm. And just to get across Brooklyn, you have to go around Brooklyn yeah. to get to where you're going. Right. So, and a lot of elderly prefer riding buses than walking out to the subway station and have it. So we're pushing, actually the MTA is coming to Red Hook sometime mid-September mm -hmm. to sit down with the community. And this is something we really have to push because they want to discuss not only that bus, but how do you like the other buses? Yeah. How do you like your subway station? Mm -hmm. How do you like your commute into Manhattan? Mm -hmm. sure. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, rather don't have a service station. It's mm -hmm. nice. You actually sit and go on us. Yeah. Um, but this is the thing that we have to address. Maybe, right. for instance, the kids that attend school over there on over there by um, Columbia in the Latin Street, mm -hmm. they have to walk this way. They got to walk that way. Right. Not good transportation for them to get to school. So, sure. uh, yes. basically, yeah. the same thing. I, I watch. A little girl sometimes get off the bus by Ikea and walk by herself. I'm like, oh my God, it's like, and then your alternative about Lorraine, Columbia. Yeah. You know how pretty that stuff yes. is. Yes. <laughs> um, but this is stuff that we have to, as a community, address. Mm -hmm. and, and I agree with a lot of people say we just don't have that, that outreach. Right. I mean, if I want to find out what's going on with resiliency or anything, mm -hmm. I go to her page. Yeah. Because sure. She has it all the time. Right. And she's always on TV, so I say, hey, there's <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> but um, we know we can make transportation better and not only speaking to the empty by improving the service that they currently have now. Right. Making buses, like in New Jersey, mm -hmm. all their buses on the back half yield to bus when it's pulling at the stop. Right. We know in New York, when the bus puts that single, Cars gun it on. This bus is not getting in front of me. And they, and they, that's another thing. Second, maybe every single bus should be a select bus service. Because I hate to say this, and maybe some people won't agree, but 10% of MTA's problems is empty in itself. The other 90% or so is actually the riding public. Right. You know, because I was at on a 61 with a lady trying to bring out a bureau. From Ikea to the bus. addressing these issues. Sure. Um, I'm going to break a promise to the EC um, to propose an action plan. So we convinced, we poured some to convince them to put in a tax by talking to in um, NYCHA mail once, please. A mailer saying that there is an NYC ferry. We concluded for a bunch of reasons that part of the low ridership in NYCHA residents could be. We don't know. We didn't know. So they need to know and then we figure out whether it just doesn't work for them. So um, EC agreed to that in December, and they said don't tell anybody, but at this point I'm like enough already. So I'm not asking you to say Carly must send, but just to actually you know, bring forward the EC, we propose that you direct mail the better connection residents. Um, that was one thing. Also, uh, I want to propose the idea of, of researching dollar lands, because again, instead of trying to wait for a big public sector thing like the MTA to respond, they're very effective in other parts of Brooklyn even. I know somebody who knows that community really well, um, but 
you know, the, the advantage of that is if it works, well, it'll stay and it's flexible being, you know, private sector and it's generally a kind of held to be affordable. Sure. You know, so, so yeah, so if we so I was the other next slide. Oh, yeah, this is the Oh, that's like, it. This looks like the big idea solutions. Oh. Somebody yeah. recorded that? Those, those, okay. Miss oh, did you put it on? Uh, okay. No, I, I'm not making notes here. I'll right. later. Uh, the other one is, again, this is more like sort of what can you know, we as a community do? Because the problem like with the signage to NYC Ferry, it's this crazy land of uh, stupid DOT signs mm -hmm. um, install, and then the EDC works them to the hook. There's a private company that runs the boats, but the right. EDC controls the dock, right. and they talk to the DOT, right. who makes useless maps and useless signs. Yes. And so I don't know the DOT rules, but are street stencils legal, like spraying on the street like we do for student sales? Because right. if they are like, hey, we get a spray paint, and NYC Ferry is some kind of clever marketing thing, and just put it all over the place and making our own signage. Right. Because we have for an incredible amount of time that people don't see trying to convince these big agencies to like install a sign or redesign a sign, and it's just cost yeah. And so I'm just going to tell you how I'm trying to get them That's to right. that That's right. You and can just, try just, it, and but it's time to Just so you know, sometimes some of this stuff, I'm totally, we're all in that and, and on board with that. Some of this stuff is in like, the stuff that I submitted to Perks per and Will was about this lot of, stuff, of suggestions of stuff to do, just so you know. So this is, this is a very broad brush, that is definitely part of it, and I think that your involvement, Carolina, and the, the, this is and the expertise of Robert, okay, okay, this is great, but I, I think we need to move through. Yeah. But I think getting this is exactly what right. we need, because everyone in this room has great ideas, like Robert's ideas, I'm sure Lily has great ideas, yes. Yeah. Uh, years ago, we had a bus that brought that came like a local bus in the community and took the people from here to the subway. That's all we did. Here to the subway. We got the people to the subway. You have enough buses out here in 1961. You have the 57. All trains got to do is speed these buses up. When you, you're standing there sometime waiting 45 minutes for a bus, and when they come, you got three right behind yeah, each other. Yeah, yeah. Well, All they got to do is work to make that happen. Yeah, that's true. That's the worst one thing I actually have to. I can't even, we can't even blame the workers. I'm not going to tell you why. What's killing a lot of these bus routes is them sharing with bike lanes. Right? Anybody who's been down 9th Street is now, it's one way. And it's even worse because now they move the, the curb parking into the middle. Mm -hmm. So what happens now, a bus that's coming down 9th Street has to go into oncoming traffic to loop around that truck that's going to Sea Town or whatever, making deliveries. Mm -hmm. And a lot of drivers are not going to lose their job. The first thing the is going to say, why do you go around the truck? But the procedure is, like the public speaker Maria said, hey, I'm blocked by a double park truck. Do I have permission to go into oncoming traffic and move back in? So, so just so you know, part of, our, part of our, it's coming at the end of this, part of our idea for this whole thing is to get some sort of monitoring system for traffic. Traffic flow, vibration included, uh, the size of trucks. This will it'll be every kind of traffic. So the one of one of the ideas that we're proposing is some sort of community-wide monitoring system, so we can check all this stuff, can, so we can actually get the data and then make those arguments, like make those arguments to the MTA. This is what we need to do, and this is what needs to change, or the Plus DOT, you know, change like make. But I do like Lily's idea about that bus that sure. has to be here, sure. Sure. and not just there, but also yes. to the ferry. Right. Because again, yeah. if we're right. trying to build that, that right. corridor yeah. and get people to go there, right. that's what needs to happen. And, and some other ideas are obviously free transfers between ferry and every other sort of transportation, you know, integration to that Omni, the new Omni, the new Metro Cab, all that sort of stuff needs to happen as well. These are all things that people... And then finally, I think we need to warn MTA that the new electric buses are causing a problem. And the problem is with the start and the stop. It is jerking people around. People are falling on the floor on these buses. I feel like I'm getting whiplash and I'm actually asking the driver, let me sit down before you start. <laughs> because the electric start has this, Kick. there's a, deflect, a, de, uh, a default there where it just kicks off and it jerks. And we're not used to that. So the driver told me that this new um, buses actually help their needs but it's actually damaging the passengers need. So before MTA goes further and catches a bunch of lawsuits, maybe we need to write a letter as Resilient Red Hook to bring them, bring it to their attention that um, we do notice there is an issue with the electric Cause start. Because we, we want the electric buses to work. We want it to work. Right, we want it to work. Okay, let's move on. So, so some ideas to address those the problems that I outlined before. So, 
here's, here's one that um, we've already done a study of in Red Hook, um, through the Resilient Red Hook Committee. We uh, partnered with Solar One, an organization that looks at the possibility of um, community solar. Now, what is community solar? If you, have, if you do, don't own your building, if you uh, live in an apartment, if you can't afford to put solar you know, panels on your roof, you can buy into a system, not buy into it necessarily, you, you can subscribe, you can just be a subscriber of a system where there are panels placed on uh, buildings in the neighborhood. And that creates our, our own, basically, solar power generation plan. So these solar panels can be placed on private properties, you partner with private properties, on, on properties, um, you know, homeowners even, there's, there's multiple different different buildings. But we've been looking at the big warehouse buildings, all the privately owned warehouse buildings, like Greg O'Connell's buildings, number of different ones, even Port Authority buildings, uh, like so public buildings as well. So if we were to create this solar, uh, this community solar plan, everyone could get clean energy, you could get it more affordable, you wouldn't pay Con Ed, or you, you, you may pay through Con Ed, or you'd pay somehow, but you would get your electricity cheaper, it would be green, we would own our, our mode of, of, uh, of power production. So I think that's a really exciting idea for, you know, yes, everyone. We have, we, have, we have about, yes. just the buildings that we study, there was enough power to power 3,000 homes, or 3,000 residents within. Um, so there's a lot of potential for that. And it also means, you know, it's, I mean, everyone, it, it's not exclusive. Anyone can buy it. Anyone can subscribe. If you subscribe, it's going to be cheap. Um, okay. Uh, the other thing, uh, just about energy options, like we're going to need, with the transition to electric cars, electric scooters, all that stuff, we're going to need charging stations around the neighborhood. That was something that we added here. Now, when we talked about transportation with the buses and public transportation, transportation is also about the transportation of goods. So the big transport, transport transportation hub for goods in our neighborhood is actually the port where the ships come in and trucks come in and out. Now, an idea that we were proposing for, for around the port was actually to create a hub for renewable energy transportation. So the ships would plug in, trucks would plug in, electric cars would plug in, electric buses. Um, the other thing is like these UPS buses, these UPS delivery trucks that are coming in and out of the neighborhood, they can all be electric instead of being otherwise. Um, there's also, the other, the other idea is, okay, so UPS is coming, we know these huge warehouses are coming. So why don't we bring the goods into the neighborhood by sea, by maritime um, means of transportation? So instead of those huge trucks coming in, we can have goods coming in um, from the, you know, into the port or into into places where places, uh, ships can dock, and then you offload those goods onto uh, small like trucks that take it just that very short distance to the to the distribution center. And then from the distribution center, we would like UPS to use the electric trucks, for instance, that they have they're using in other parts of the world. So why not use electric trucks? So you're reducing emissions, it's more efficient form of transportation, it reinvigorates the port, and around this renewable energy transportation hub, jobs, lots of jobs, like the, there's talk about the NYC ferry going in there. So it could be NYC ferry uh, building an electric fleet, having people come in there to service those fleets, having, having the large amounts of people employed in that, and all, all the infrastructure that's being built, this is one thing I'm really advocating for, Anything that gets built in the world has to be jobs for local people, local hiring, training, you know, guarantees of that. So, so our community is actually, you know, benefiting from all this infrastructure that we're hoping to build. Um, so as I said, we can do electric ferries, we can do shore power for the ships. The problem, as I said, with the shore power for the cruise ships right now, we do not have a way to make those ships plug in. These are huge companies that pollute the world and pay fines just because that's what they do for business. So. Carlos Machaca has a, uh, a piece of legislation that he's supposedly uh, bringing, uh, you know, making a reality, which would make these cruise companies plug in. We need something like that. That's why it works in California. That's why it works in other parts of the world. So we need these mechanisms, these legal mechanisms, to make sure that people can't pay to pollute and build their profits off the health of our children in our neighborhood. That's what we. That's that's why we need that legislation. Um, as I said, the most clean energy, local job opportunities and training, all of this stuff needs to come back into the neighborhood. Um, we already covered a lot of this. Um, the ferry routes, Governor's Island needs to be on the ferry route as well, so that's another one. Um, and also, as I said, building these charging stations is great. 
Uh, we need we need all of that charging for the new modes of transportation. I mean, if you want to get to the subway, why not get on a little share e-scooter up to the subway or, or something like this? You know, there's, there's other ways to do it. Or something, or a little... Yeah, I think it'll be great for scooter. I think it'll be great for scooter. And here's that other piece that I just uh, mentioned in passing before. So to make all this happen, to, to have good data, to, to present to agencies that we need to make decisions about this and politicians to support us, we need some data. So, so this pollution tracking and monitoring, and also not just pollution, so vibration, routes, where the trucks come in and out, all that sort of stuff, that, that's an important piece of the puzzle. And so I think all I've got now is just the agencies. So we've got a lot on our list. There's a lot of people and a lot of agencies involved here. Parks. Um, what's that? Parks. Uh, parks too. And that was not Alex's list either. There's a huge footprint of parks department. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Do you so want awesome. that too? Well, that's what I did. I said I put them on public Thank you. List. Thank but you. I'm just, uh, I mean, how do you, how do you work that? How do you, how do you see that playing into energy transportation? Just interesting. If you need a place for powering something, or people yeah. go to the parks, okay. the parks are a massive destination. Sure. Look at the line around the pool, look yeah. at the, the, you know, the charging stations, stuff like that. I mean, they actually have a lot of unused parkland. I'm not right. going to take the parkland, but mm -hmm. you have one have a solar power station in the corner of it, sure. you know, near the pool. It yep. seems to me it's a kind of symposium of education yes. and outreach, right. and then they've got some, you know, huge facilities. Fantastic. Now, right. you know, and, and to piggyback, that just gave me an idea. No, I'm not saying in the pool, but like you I would say in the pool, not even around. It has to be a distance away because it's yeah, around. A, a, a block, yeah, but a block away, for example, like near where the, the food vendors are, like down the end of that street, as you as you go to Henry Street Basin, no one's going over there by the Henry Street Basin as you go down that, you know, that end of the street. I and mean, that's kind of quiet area of the park. There's that section of Hallett Street, which is just been a big weed pile, you know. Yeah. So there are quiet yeah. parts of our property. If it gets too remote, it's not convenient for people, but but I just, and actually, the Parks playing. Department has a program uh, that builds tiny homes for art and mobile studios. Oh, yeah. uh, so they built a couple of, of those, uh, and they're going to be building quite a few more. So Red Hook does have an opportunity to probably get one or two of those uh, studios, and we could probably custom make it where you can see the for charging station. But we're thinking about parks in terms of your forum, you know, trying to get public sector change. So we've been dealing with them that are incredibly rigid about what kind of signage they will allow on their property. Like it's only their thing. You can't you can't market the fact that our NYC Ferry Advocacy Project with the PSC 76 kids mentioned the 275 price. No, it can't go up there. I mean, it's all kind of like this. And I'm like, start busting that open so that if people stand in the queue for the pool forever, you could have an educational sign there that says, join resilient run or whatever. But under, under their current framework, you can't use their real estate in that kind of sort of way. And I, I mean, they have a lot of rigidity, not just in responding to the whole brownfield thing and everything else. It's like, sorry, okay, sorry. what was the next? Sorry, sorry about the length of that. Like water, water, the time. water is really simple. I mean, sorry, yeah. water <laughs> just flows in quickly. I'm, I'm fat, I'm, I'm new to <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Oops. Um, so we're, we're, I think it's actually simple, but it, there's a lot more to talk about. So I'll just go really quickly, and then maybe we could make arrangements to talk more in depth about our water issues and our water objectives later offline. Yeah, because we want to get out of here by 12:30. So um, Red Hook is floods. You know, and it, it's going to get worse with climate change. Um, our infrastructure is not designed to withstand the kind of flooding that we're likely to see in the future. Uh, there's our building stock. Um, we have a lot of hazardous material on the waterfront. Um, we also just have, uh, we're not really sure about how much uh, drainage capacity our sewer system has. So there's uh, just uh, uncertainty about the future and how much water we can load in the future. Um, and then there's this whole set of questions around insurance. Um, we got new flood maps after Sandy. It's going to take a few years for them to kick in, but once they do, everybody's insurance rates are going to go way up, and that's going to be a, a real stress on home ownership. Um, could be, you know, have effects on the rental market. Uh, just make housing more and more uh, less and less affordable. And, you know, have impacts on you know exacerbating gentrification and everything else. So. Uh, the kind of all all the issues come together when we think about how how the water is going to affect us in the future. But it's also a lot of opportunity here. Um, there is some 
projects in the works. We don't like them. You know, they could be improved. There's the interim blood protection project uh, from the mayor's office. I think Gita said really well, that's a project that we could shape, you know, through our advocacy if we figure out what we want. Um, there's what the emergency management people have done already, the bags. Um, you know, there's probably some future version of that that we could advocate to do a better job with. And then I think there's a lot of solutions around using our shorelines and, and natural protections uh, to not just mitigate flooding and provide for more drainage capacity, but to also create some, some quality public space and, and, and remediate toxins in the soil and uh, improve water quality. Um, and, and then there's probably a lot of work we have to do in terms of upgrading our housing stock. Um, but first of all, NYCHA housing, which you know, they're getting a big investment from FEMA, but you know we've got to continue to advocate to make sure that that uh, is, is the best use of the, um, you know that they're listening to the population there, and that they're you know doing everything right. And but you know there's more that needs to be done. They had a bigger scope at one time, right? And they had to cut it down. And, um, and there's ongoing environmental issues there. So uh, then there's you know the rest of the buildings, whether it's commercial or or you know our commercial street and run the rain. How those commercial streets remain nice places for people to shop and have small businesses, but also adapt to higher flood elevations. Uh, so that interfaces with the whole zoning conversation as well. Um, what did I miss? Probably a lot. I mean, flood insurance is an opaque topic, and probably don't want to have a whole community meeting about that, but we probably should. Um, and there's a lot of people who have learned a, a lot about that, so we'll, we'll, we'll be talking about that more in the future. But any, anybody else on water before we move on? Such a simple topic. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and I think that this is a short list. There's a lot more people involved yeah. in water conversations. Yeah, let's go oh, yeah. to, uh, to economic.